This is Dr. Andrew Young at the Center for Hip and Knee Replacement in Santa Monica. And today we're going to talk about or try to answer one of the most frequently asked questions in the office. We made the switch from traditional knee replacement to robotic assisted knee replacement approximately six years ago. And a very valid and fair question and common question is, why did you guys do that? And so I'll take you through some of our reasoning and rationale. I think it's important to know that total knee replacement, whether it's traditional or robotic assisted, works very well. And the two procedures are so much more similar than they are different. So I'll say that again, they are so much more similar than they are different. So the only difference is the technique that we use to place the implants, but the implants themselves are the same, whether we use traditional or robotic. The exposure is very similar and the fixation to the bone is very similar. So overall, the procedures are very similar. Now, given that they're so similar, there are some small differences. And one of the same differences that we believe are very important are, one is the increase in safety with the creation of virtual boundaries around the bone. Number two is the ability to define and establish angles. And number three is the ability to set and verify measurements prior to any type of resection. I'll tell you what that means. The first thing is creating virtual boundaries. So anytime we're doing a total knee replacement, we're resurfacing the bone. That means we're taking off a few millimeters at the top layer of each bone. So we use a saw to cut the top layer of the bone. But anytime we introduce a saw from the front, we also have to be aware that all the nerves and vessels and tendons and muscles are in the back. And it's very hard to see the back of the knee when you're looking along the perspective of the blade. You can see the blade going in, but you cannot see the tip of the blade in typical surgery. The beauty of robotic assisted surgery is that now we have a CT scan so we can change our perspective from looking along the length of the blade to looking at a bird's eye view. So instead of looking perpendicular to the bone, we can look at the axis of the bone. So now it's very straightforward to see for me to see where the back of the knee is and where I should stop my saw blade before it plunges any further. This also applies to the femur. This is the cut of the posterior condyles. This is one of the hardest cuts because you cannot see the end of the blade. And we can tell with traditional instrumentation when we're there by listening for the change in the sound of the blade. And so we have cues, but this type of very clear visual boundary is much better than an auditory cue. So I'll show you what that looks like next. So on this video, uh, I'll show you. So here we've established virtual boundaries around the tibia. I'll just show you how that boundary keeps the saw blade within its margins at all times to make sure that we never go past and then potentially injure the posterior neurovascular structures. So we can see it just comes in and then that line acts as a guide rail or a curb beyond which the blade just cannot cut. And so also I know exactly how far posterior I am so I don't or I minimize or even eliminate the risk of that blade plunging to the back. The second major reason or the second major difference between robotic and traditional is the ability to define and that set angle. So anytime we talk about knee replacement, we're talking about three axes an X, a Y, a Z. And so we'll call this the coronal axis. This is axial, this is sagittal. And so we're talking about shifting the implants up or down back and forth as one degree of freedom, but the third degree, the fourth, fifth, and sixth degree of freedom in any type of measurement has to do with the angle around that rotation. So around the femur, it's varus, varus and valgus, around the axis, it's external and internal rotation, and around this sagittal axis, it's flexion extension. And what we can do, rather than having a predefined set angle for every person, we can personalize the angle, or customize the angle to match the anatomy of the bone. So one of the major advantages is rather than having the same angle for everybody, we can define the angle based on a person's unique anatomy. And then we can set the angle, I'll show you what that is. Setting angles are very tough and you're responsible for setting six different angles. I'll just show you how we set one of the angles. So one of them is tibial slope or the relationship of the tibial implant in to the tibia uh, looking from the side. And in the past, what we do is we put uh, a fixation point in what we thought was the middle of the tibia and then we put a clamp around the ankle and then you can't see this bone so you look at the foot and we generally line this rod up with the second toe so we think we know the middle of the knee and then 
Here we line this up with the second toe because the second toe is approximately for the middle of the angle. And then we look at this rod in relation to the skin and then try to line that up. And so this is what we did for almost 20 years and it worked better than having nothing. But these alignment rods do not compare to definitively being able to say, this is the bone. We already know the position of the ankle from our CT and we just set it at three degrees and there's no uncertainty. And so moving from traditional alignment rods, which rely on eyeballing and estimation is very different from being able to map and then outline and then set the angle definitively. And we can do this with each of the six measurements, three on the femur, three on the tibia. Third major difference has to do in measuring and verifying the depth of the resection. So the first one was the safety and the creation of virtual boundaries. The second is the ability to define and set angles. And then the third is measuring and verifying resection. So the depth of the resection is very important. So we use a measured resection technique. We know that we're putting on nine millimeters of implant back, which is equivalent to seven millimeters of bone, two millimeters of cartilage. And so we can know ahead of time that we're going to set this at seven millimeters on the lateral compartment. And we do this with traditional instrumentation, but instead of knowing exactly in relation to the level of the bone is based on the CT, what we do is we have a fixation point. This is our alignment rod from before, and then we put a finger and then it, this height is set to seven millimeters. So we estimate seven millimeters and then, then we make our cut, but we're unable to verify that this depth is seven millimeters. And so I'll show you the difference between being able to measure and set and then the difference when you can verify. So in the prior system, this uses a digital way to set it at seven millimeters. The other way used a virtual finger that would come on top and then infer or estimate seven millimeters of resection depth. But then the only thing that you could see at surgery was the medial side or the opposite side. And so you'd set it seven and then you'd infer that you're cutting seven on this side by looking at this side. And so it was the best we could do with the technology at the time, but now this is avoided. Now I know exactly, I can look at it from the front, I can look at it from the side, I'm at seven millimeters. I plan for seven millimeters and I can verify seven millimeters before any resections are made rather than having to infer and estimate based on a measurement that doesn't really involve this lateral side. Okay, so big picture, they both work very well. The main difference for us is very, very technical because now we can introduce quantitative analysis and mathematics into knee replacement so that we get a more predictable result. We can establish boundaries around the bone to increase the level of safety, but also measure and define and verify angles and resection depth. Thank you very much.